There have just been some bizarre stories here recently. Uh, if you if you are subscribed to the Wall Street Journal, the weekend edition had this piece tracking the trackers. They had uh, they tr they took a t totally clean computer, stripped of it of basically everything, visited the top 50 internet sites, uh, visited by Americans, and with the exception of Wikipedia, virtually every th every site threw tracking devices onto the computer. Some sites, over a hundred different tracking pieces of software were put on this computer, and we're not talking just cookies. And, and uh, then you know, there's another piece here tracking the trackers, how they did this. And at the same time, down in Brazil, and this is where it gets uh, truly bizarre, Unilever is you know, this, this giant multinational company. I think they're the ones that bought out Ben & Jerry's, in fact. They've planted GPS tracking devices in detergent boxes... And they can literally set off a beeper in the detergent box. Now, initially, they're saying, this is so that you can be a winner. You, too, could be a winner. Buy more detergent. You might get the one that goes beep, beep, beep in your uh, laundry room. But the reality is that between these and the GPS chips in our pass, in our new passports and the ones that the states are talking about putting in our driver's licenses, you know, it's not inconceivable. You could be in a crowd protesting something, uh, the World Trade Organization, or for that matter, a tea party. And, you know, and police agency drives by with a scanner and zoom. They know the identity of every single person in that. Or is this Minority Report, the Tom Cruise movie, where you walk into a store and the sign, the electronic sign says, well, hello, Mr. Or uh, in the case of Catherine, hello, Catherine Mangu Ward. And uh, welcome to the pro welcome to the first of all, welcome to our program. Catherine Mangu uh, Ward is with us. She's senior editor and columnist at Reason Magazine, Reason.com. Hey, welcome. Thanks for having me. How would you feel if you walked into a store, the store greeted you by name, and knew about uh, your purchases from a dozen other stores? You know, I get that this makes people a little nervous. I understand it. How about a little creeped out? A little creeped out, even. But uh, before we get into the nitty-gritty of what the policy should be and what the privacy rules should be, I have to say I also think this is a little bit cool. I mean, you have to grant me that there is something a little bit neat about the idea that we now have the technology to um, to know about people to this degree and that there are some companies who I will grant you maybe not the most brilliant marketing move ever by the Brazilian detergent makers, but that they're actually trying to use it to do fun stuff that makes people happy, not uh, you know only super sinister you know, well, yeah, and, and, the, and the best example of that probably is Facebook. Sure. Facebook is an example. Google uh, personalized ads that pop up on the side of my email are another one. Uh, Amazon. Generally, I find advertising irritating as all get out, but I actually sometimes click on those ads because it's what I was looking for. Yeah, exactly. And then the same thing, Amazon, they you know, they know is based on your buying patterns, what, what you want. Um, this is... In, and in fact, Catherine, you wrote a piece called Is Privacy Overrated? The Merits, Drawbacks, and Inevitability of the Surveillance Nation. It's it's so bizarre. We have in arguably two generations. Uh, I, I I think you know by Jefferson standards, it's been two maybe maybe three generations since I was born. He defined a generation as 19 years. Um, I'm in my 50s, and I remember a time when I could rent a car with cash. I could pay for a hotel room with cash. I could walk up to an airline counter, buy a ticket with cash, and get on the plane and never see a police officer, a security person, or anything. A person could live anonymously in the United States. A person could live basically below the radar. Um, I have a friend who is an old uh, political activist back in the 60s who literally had, <laughs> we were back in East Lansing a couple of years ago, and, and Dell was telling me and uh, Louise and I and our kids the story about how he had to take his mother into the Social Security office to, to certify that he actually was him and that he was alive, because for 25 years he'd basically lived in the underground economy and had nothing to do with, with uh, commerce and didn't have a credit card, didn't have a driver's license, didn't have anything, and, and the government had dis decided he was dead. Um, uh, so, you know, at, at what... How, 
at, there, there used to be, I think, definitions of privacy. We used to, as a country, and I'd say, you know, like for 200 years, we had this notion that kind of went hand in hand with the whole libertarian thing that you guys at Reason Magazine are very big on of individual rights and individual individuality and, you know, I cloudy or not really, you know, I independent us or whatever. <laughs> and now it's like, and now I read you, you know, in Reason Magazine, you can read this over at Reason.com, saying, well, privacy, maybe it's over, overrated and isn't this kind of cool. Um, Dubai now is saying no to research in motion and uh, to the BlackBerry. You know, uh, United Arab Emirates saying, we don't like the fact that this uh, machine encodes. We want to be able to track everybody's emails and uh, text messages. Well, Where think, do we draw the damn line here? Sure. I mean, I think uh, you won't be surprised to hear that one place I think we should draw the line is government action versus private action. And, you know, I think you take the Dubai case. This is an example where people are having uh, choices taken away from them, right? These are people who have chosen to purchase uh, devices, some GPS-enabled, that would theoretically let a third party track them and put them in their pockets. Uh, lots of people make that choice every day. That's one way we can tell that people actually don't mind giving away some amount of privacy for convenience because they're simply choosing to do so freely. Um, I think there's a big difference between that and um, secret or um, you know mandatory and widespread government surveillance where, here's, here's, uh, where people aren't choosing it and where they may not even know about it. Well, and, and, and historically, the... Uh, I was going to say libertarian or conservative, but frankly, I think liberals have always fallen on this side too. The let's say the American view has been because it it really goes its roots are in our the founding of this nation has been that government uh, libertarians like to refer to government as men with guns that government shouldn't have these powers, but that it's fine if private corporations do. But we now live in a world where the largest and most powerful entities with a few exceptions, just a few exceptions, are no longer governments. They're corporations. And I do agree that there's a blurring of that line, um, the line where if a private entity collects a bunch of information, um, you know, the fact is that they, there's not a lot of guarantee that government can't Well, and they can use it to destroy you just as, I mean, a government can walk in, you know, with a gun and put you in jail, but a corporation can destroy your life just as quickly by destroying your credit, for example, your ability to engage in commerce, uh, and in fact, point, a, arguably even of, more completely. At this point, it's a question of motivations, right? I mean, it is, of course, true that uh, large entities with lots of power do have um you know, the possibility of, of hurting people. that That's just a, a fact of the world. So at but, what point are you going to, we just have a few seconds left, at what point are the, are the folks at Reason going to join the rest of us in saying, hey, wait a minute, we're worried about corporate power too? You know, we've, uh, we are just as concerned about the combination of big business and big government as anyone, but uh, I think a little GPS in the detergent box is not the end of the world. Okay, so, so as long as government's not involved, you got no problem with it? Hey, I would love to have someone show up at my door with a prize. Okay, Catherine Mangu Ward, Reason Magazine, Reason.com. You can read all about it over there. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you.